Hey guys, this is Kieran from Eccentric Physio, and uh, today we're looking at an exercise or variations of exercises that target your frontal plane muscles. Um, these muscles can work in, in other planes, but uh, we're talking about biasing sideways movement. So either we're moving through that range or we're reducing the amount of movement through that range. Um, it's gonna be a little more hip focused. So if you've had hip injuries or even like lower limb injuries, um, even back injuries really, this will be a nice exercise to start bringing a little more awareness in terms of uh, maybe some movement capacity if you've lost um, and uh, how, how to reclaim it. When we're talking about our lateral subsystem, we're talking about uh, some primary movers and then synergists to those movers. And synergists being muscles that help out but don't have a primary role in control of this plane. And the primary ones are sort of the glutes on the, the side of our hip, our groin muscles, um, particularly the ones down the middle, and uh, our opposite side, QL. And they form this triangle. We've got a triangle coming across like this down into the groin, that's one point, over to the hip, that's two, and then back over here, which is three. And we know that a triangle is a very stable structure. It gives us the capacity to be on one leg and not fall over without compensating into the sagittal. So you might see someone be here with like a bent knee and that's a bit of a different situation. If they're here though, and they start kind of flip-flopping sideways or maybe the head's going or maybe the hip's sinking down like this, you know that there's maybe a bit of a frontal plane issue. So something that we can do is lift weights when they're on one side of our body and it's gonna create a reflexive stability or reflexive response to not fall over. Kettlebells are a really nice way to just isolate that pure frontal movement. The sagittal side of the balance is going to be kicked in just through your own body weight, say as your hips, the mass of your hips or the mass of your rib cage moves forward or behind your feet. You'll have to do something not to fall over. Strategies a lot of people will see is toe gripping or maybe toes lifting and you know maybe you're on the verge of losing balance and that's just a strategy you use. But frontal, we talked about this sideways movement. So let's say I've had a left, uh, sorry, a right lower limb injury, and I need to be better at either accepting weight onto my leg or propelling from a stable platform. So for example, lateral jumps. So say I land on my leg, I can land and I can catch myself. How about if I land, but then I need to push myself back to the other way? If you feel like you're not able to absorb weight, then you probably need to work on building some capacity, getting down into that position and coming out of it. Once you feel like that's pretty consistent, then you could maybe work a little bit more on actually propulsion or the, the realization of, of power. So we we'll call them suitcase deadlifts. So you're gonna just bend down to start like this. And if you feel like you can't reach without tipping sideways, maybe raise the weight up a little bit higher. You could put it on a couple, uh, couple weight plates like this, or maybe a step. You're trying to be able to stay reasonably straight without tipping sideways. And so as you're here and you lift up, and what's gonna happen is my right leg is gonna to have to do a lot more work to push me up. I'm also feeling my left lower back do a lot of work as well. So there's that triangle we were talking about. Is this leg doing some work as well? Yes, but is it doing a ton of work? Could I take it off the ground? Yeah, doing something similar like this. It just gives me a bit of a, kind of a rudder, something that I could control myself if I'm gonna fall a bit. So, really nice movement, and you just do reps of this. When you feel like this kind of stuff's pretty easy though, you're gonna move into something a little more challenging. So we call this more of a suitcase deadlift, but with a barbell. So you've still got this frontal plane challenge of sideways, but what you also have now is the weight in front of you and behind you that's gonna create a balance demand, balancing forward and back balance as well. So now you're working on two things. A little bit trickier to manage, but it's good because you kind of learn in real time. So if I came down, same setup, and I grab, and then I lift, I wanna see that the plates can stay reasonably stable. As I come down, can they touch at somewhat of the same time, right? If I show you from the side, so we start thinking this, about this as kind of like a seesaw. If I come down 
and it starts to tip forward, I know that I need to shift weight backwards to balance that seesaw out. Now that could be my own body weight, or that could be my grip position. If you feel like your grip is in the center of the bar though, that's when you start have to thinking about, well, do I have the mobility to even get into the bottom of the position? Again, do I need to raise the bar up? Or do you have the mobility and you need to either sit deeper, be taller, maybe a wider stance to allow you to get down. Yeah, it's kind of looking more like squat territory, but that's okay. We're just working on controlling a particular type of movement. So for example, if I come down in a really narrow stance, so I'm about hip width apart, and I come down, my hips now get blocked. I can't go deeper. And if I grab the bar, it starts to tip forward a little bit. So it means I need to put weight backwards. To put weight backwards, I need to push my hips further back, but I can't do that because I'm blocked by my pelvis and my hip flexion. So if I go a little bit wider, I'll be able to get a little bit deeper with my pelvis. So I've gone from here to here, and what that means now is I can push my hips further back, and as I grab the bar, it's a lot more stable. Similar thing is gonna happen if the tip, weight tips that way. I have to push more weight forwards. The tricky thing about that is a lot of people aren't gonna have the pelvic mobility maybe to get deep enough, but also the spinal extension to be tall and find this nice center point. So what that might look like is people are gonna to start to really hip hinge like this, and that's a way for me to put weight forward of my feet. That's where you might see more of a sort of a good morning style or a bit more of a, a squat alternative that's a bit more hip dominant. All good strategies, we're not saying one's bad or worse, but just thinking about what is it that you're doing to try and keep balance of this. Coming back to the frontal plane though, the obvious situation is that you lean sideways or you can't control the weight when you come up, meaning that you start deviating a little bit one way. You might be able to solve that with some hip width. You might have to reach down further to the ground to really engage your lats. You might have to be taller to allow your rector spinae to even get into a position so they can stabilize you. If you're in a flexed position, there's gonna be a little less advantageous in terms of length tension to stop you. So if I'm flexed, uh, flexed they're gonna be a little bit harder for me to stop sideways movement. If I'm upright though, they're more able to restrict this movement. So what that would look like, if I came down and I'm very flexed and I pick the weight up, I start drifting this way. All I've got is kind of my pure lower back. If I step nice and tall though, now my upper spinal rectors, along with lats and a few other things can kick in and I can come up without drifting sideways. So really nice tool to just get some real time feedback. Once you figure out where the balance point is though, then you can start exerting power. You can start exerting force. You can go into heavier weights and you can start to build that ability to accept weight again onto one leg, say from jumping, and then your ability to then accept that weight and realize it into uh, power and start working on propulsion drills and single leg hops. So give this a go. You might find uh, it's humbling. You might find that you've got some mobility stuff you need to work on, or maybe you just need to change your stance a bit within the requirements, uh, well, the limitations that you currently have. So let us uh, know if you try this exercise out and if you find some use out of it, um, be interested to hear. If you like this video, then please hit like below. Otherwise, to check out more of our content in the future, you can subscribe to our channel by clicking our logo over here. And to check out our latest video, click up here.